Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 through 11. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. The one who knocks, the door will be open. If your son asks for bread, we'll give him a stone. Or if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a snake. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those that ask him? So what I want you to know about that, in those verses there was three major action verbs. Ask, seek, and knock. So uh, what does that tell you about when there's a set of three, that there's government or there's a law being revealed to you. Now, also we know how, that it's a spiritual law because anytime you see the word whosoever or whoever or everyone, that means the, what they, they're stating is that this works every time because it's not based on who the person is that's doing it. Did they do this to precede it, so forth? No everyone. Now what else you need to know about it? The verb tense in here in the Greek is it's the Greek present imperative tense which implies a continuous action. So if properly translated it's saying continue asking, continue seeking, and continue knocking. In other words you keep on asking, you keep on seeking, and you keep on knocking. Why? Because everyone that keeps on asking receives. Everyone who keeps on seeking finds. And everyone who keeps on knocking, it will be open. That word everyone gives you a guarantee from God. Because it doesn't matter who it is. If you keep on knocking, the door will be open. Praise the Lord. Now, well, Pastor David, what about the times where you pray and you get the answer like that? Yeah, that can happen. Does it always happen that way? So it may happen that way. You may wait a little bit. But one thing God says, you will get the answer. The door will be open if you keep on on doing it praise the Lord because it will always happen because that is a spiritual law that God has put into the earth so it doesn't matter who you are you could be a lost person you know it's those spiritual laws they work we're just supposed to know about them there's mysteries to the lost and but we're supposed to search them out and find them but he's put those principles in the earth and God doesn't have to do a thing. He's already put it in there. Just like there's natural laws, like gravity. If a lost person and a saved person, they jump off the Empire State Building, both of them are, if they weigh the same, they're gonna splat on the ground at the exact same time. Because the gravity doesn't say, oh, this one knows the Lord. I mean, no, God's put these principles in the earth. And then he says, now I put them in there so you can receive your full inheritance as this is how you receive them and make them manifest into the natural. And here's this spiritual law. And he wants you to know about it because he wants you to win every spiritual battle. And do you know if you don't quit, you will win every spiritual battle between for all of eternity, praise yeah. the Lord. The only way you can lose is if you quit. Why? Because everyone who keeps knocking the door is going to be open, praise the Lord. In other words, you have to be more determined to receive from God than the devil is determined to stop the blessing. Who's got the most determination is who's going to win. If you don't quit, you win. Why? Because patience, but in King James, patience, other translations says perseverance. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit listed in Galatians chapter 5. And these fruits can only be manifested through the Spirit of God. Now, can the devil do anything by the Spirit of God? 
No, that means he doesn't have patience. He doesn't have any per perseverance. That's a fruit of the Spirit of God. He doesn't have any of those fruits. So that means when you want to quit, he wants to quit twice as bad because he doesn't have any patience. Praise the Lord. And all you have to do is just hang on and keep going and you will win guaranteed 100% by God and his word. It's a law he's put into the earth. I, uh, while we're talking about getting a word from God through sister. Uh, not long ago, a few months ago, remember Daniel, you got one and I got one. And one of the things that came forth was that I had authority in this area. That I could speak things and they would, it would have to do what I would speak. And you know the reason why that was said? Was it because I was super anointed and I was just, you know, the greatest and the, oh, I was, I was the best looking in it. No, what was it? This is what God said. You have outlasted the devil. Amen. It took a while, but he wanted to quit. And once he found out I was never going to quit, he gave up. And I outlasted him and I got the victory. Why? Because it is a spiritual law. I just kept knocking. I kept knocking. I kept knocking. The devil said, he's not ever going to quit. I, I can't wait to let go and get out of the way because he has no patience. And now whatever I speak going on in Kingwood and Humble and Atascacita and Huffman and Porter, they have to obey because... I outlasted the devil, praise God. And you can do the same because it didn't take any super ability to do that. I just made up my mind and it'll work the same way for you. It's a spiritual law. When you feel like quitting, hold on because Satan wants to quit more than you do. That's why right when you get close, the answer is coming and he's about to give up. He'll make one big push to bring something to try to bring fear to make you let go and uh, but all you have to do and the reason why he does it is because he can't hang on much longer he's about to let go so he just he gives us that big push but if you hold on and you don't quit you will get the victory guaranteed by God you keep knocking and the victory is yours so God doesn't say, oh, you keep praying, that's a lack of faith. No, he says, keep knocking and the door will be open. Remember, all that you need to win a spiritual battle is just don't quit. That's why it's everyone. Now, how much ability does it take to not quit? How much gifting does it take to not quit? How much talent does it take to not quit? The answer to all three questions, none. That's why God said everyone that does it is going to win because you don't need any of that stuff. You just need to believe what God said and don't let go until you see the answer. Hallelujah. Anyone can win because anyone can decide that they won't quit. Hallelujah. You see, the race, according to the word of God, the race is not won by the swiftest. It's not won by the strongest. But the race is won by those who won't quit. Ecclesiastes 9.11. Solomon, with great wisdom, wrote this. I've seen something else under the sun. The race is not to the swift or the battle to the strong, nor does food come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant or favor to the learned but time and chance happen to them all. What does that mean? Well, in this world you shall have tribulation. No matter how wise, no matter how strong, no matter how swift, no matter how learned, all these things you're going to run into trouble. And the ones that win it's not that you have all those qualities. It's just the ones that don't quit and sooner or later you make it past that hurdle and you get to the victory waiting for you by God who is just 
rooting you on, saying, hey, don't quit. I got the prize waiting for you. Hallelujah. So, let's look at uh, Hebrews 10, 36. What does that tell us? Well, it's for you have need of patience. What do you mean patience? That after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. So God says, you do this, I'll do that. You do this, and if you don't see it right away, you know, God sends answers. And he dispatches angels to bring the provision, bring the healing, bring the blessing, whatever it may be, your bring that spouse that you're believing for, whatever. And you, you, you knock, God, oh, I want that bride. I want her to have these, these features and so forth, so on. And he sends her. But you know, it doesn't, how about Daniel? You know, he prayed, the Bible says, uh, it took 21 days because uh, the prince of Persia was holding him up. What if Daniel, in that 21 days, had said, well, God, I guess you're just not going to answer. I guess it's just not going to happen, you know. Uh, and then what happens? Here comes the answer, and then yak, rah, rah, whoop, back it goes. But even if you mess up like that, if you go back and you keep knocking, he'll send it around again, praise the Lord. That's why everyone who keeps knocking the door is going to be open. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's look at some biblical examples of persistent or examples of those who kept on knocking. Luke chapter 11, 5 through 10. Jesus is speaking. Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. And a, a friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door's already locked. My children and I are in bed. I can't give up, get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of your friendship, but because of your shameless audacity, or, or in the King James, I think it says your importunity, and your perseverance, surely he'll get up and give you as much as you need. Keep going. So I say to you, again, Greek present imper imperative, keep asking and it will be given to you. Keep seeking and you will find. Keep knocking and the door will be open. He got the bread because he kept knocking. Go away. No, I got to have it. Go away. I got to have it. Oh, I got to get If I do, he's just going to keep knocking. So I got to get up. The door will be open. Hallelujah. The man would not rise even though the neighbor was his friend. He arose and gave his neighbor as many loaves as he wanted because of his neighbor's persistence. In other words, his neighbor kept knocking and the door was open and his need was met. Our heavenly father, you see this man was tired. Our heavenly father is never tired. He's never sleeping. He who watches over Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. And he wants to give it to you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Luke 12, 32. Fear not, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He's not tired. He wants to give it to you. If you keep on knocking and the neighbor who doesn't want to get up gives it to you, how much more and how much quickly will your heavenly father who wants to give it to you and is not tired will give it to you? Let's look at another example. Luke 18 through 8. Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Hey, imagine that. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice 
so that she won't eventually come and attack me. Praise the Lord. And she said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Will he find people still knocking for the answer? Because God considers that faith. Praise the Lord. The unjust judge, he had no desire to please God. He didn't care about that. He didn't care what men thought. He didn't care about doing right or uh, dispensing justice. He had no desire to act justly, do what's right. The only reason he ruled for justice for the widow is because he knew she would just keep coming and wear him out unless he uh, dealt rightly with her and give her justice against her adversary. Continuous knocking causes even unjust men to do right. Can you imagine what it would do to a God who is the most righteous and just that wants to give you the kingdom of God? Hallelujah. Can you imagine what it will do to a just God who already desires to give you more than what you deserve? She was saying, give me what I deserve. God says, I can't wait to give you more than what you deserve. Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. Praise the Lord. It pays off to keep knocking with God. Hallelujah. So Jesus has instructed us through the parable of the unjust judge to continue knocking because he considers that as faith and that's what pleases God. It actually pleases God when you keep knocking. In other words, he's pleased when we keep asking, keep seeking, and keep on knocking. Our persistence doesn't just work on a sleepy neighbor or an unjust judge, but it works on God Almighty. Hallelujah. As a Pastor Daniel would say, this is a big deal. This is a big deal. That means you can win every spiritual battle that you ever enter into, no matter whether you, you know, you got your shoes shined or not, or your hair combed or whatever. All you have to do is not quit. Hallelujah. Persistent knocking works on everyone. It works on a stubborn pastor who doesn't want to do certain things. Oh, I've you know, told this story many times, but you're going to have to hear it again. My wife said, honey, I want to, uh, re I want to add on to the house. And I'm like, <laughs> no, there's no way. That cost way too much money. We don't really need that. Absolutely not. Let me, I've done the financial analysis and, and I've looked at it. Every, it's just totally out of the question. I put my foot down as head of the household. No, no, absolutely not. And that is final. And if anyone else was watching and see that, they would say it would be impossible for me to change my mind. No one would believe that we would ever add on the house. No one except for my wife, Sandy. What did she do? She kept knocking and knocking and knocking and knocking. And we added on to the house. And let me tell you, since then, we've remodeled four more times. She believed and she never quit. She kept knocking and knocking. She got her addition and four more remodels, one of which was another, pour some more slab and add on to the house. I don't even resist now. She says, oh, I wanna do this. It's like, what's the use? She'll just keep knocking. You just give in. Hallelujah. You see, God used my wife, Sandy, to teach me the principle of continuous knocking. Continuous knocking or 
Pressing in against opposition brings the answer from God. Mark 10, 46. Then they came to Jericho and Jesus said to his disciples, together with a large crowd, we're leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him, told him to be quiet. And he backed off and said, oh, excuse me. No, he shouted all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up, eat, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and ran to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Immediately, he received his sight and went back to his old way of begging on the, no, he, remember he threw his beggar's cloak off. He knew I'm going to receive from God and he didn't quit. He kept knocking even though people said, give up, be quiet. If you ever done that, we'll start talking Jesus out in the world and then they say, keep that Jesus stuff in church. What do you do? You cry out all the more. Amen. And then something supernatural is going to happen, praise the Lord. He cried a great deal more. And the King uh, James said, Jesus stood still. You get the attention of Jesus when you press in against opposition. You press into Jesus when the religious folks said, don't do that. Or that, the miracles are gone. That's never going to work. Keep that Jesus stuff in church. You press in. You've got the attention of Jesus. He stood still and said, what is it that you want me to do for you? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then said it was his faith that made him whole. He was, Jesus was so pleased by Bartimaeus continuous knocking that he said, what, what do you want me to do? Whatever you ask, I'm going to do it. I love faith. That's what pleases me. And when you press in like that and keep knocking, Jesus considers that faith. Sorry for all the religious people that don't think that. Let's see, the religious folks, Jesus. I'm going with Jesus. How about you? Praise the Lord. Jesus called this persistence faith and said that this persistence call, uh, called faith made Bartimaeus whole. Jesus told the woman with the issue of blood, she pressed in despite opposition. And she, he told her her faith had made her whole. One of the greatest biblical examples of the miracle working power of continuous prayer and knocking was when an angel broke Peter out of prison. Let's look at Acts 12, 5 through 16. It's a little bit long reading, but it's worth it. So Peter was kept in prison. Now look at here. The church was earnestly praying to God for him. They were continually praying. They were held up in a place and they were all praying. Oh God, let, you know, let's bring Peter to us. Except they had a certain way in mind that God was supposed to answer that prayer. Have you ever done that? Don't tell God how to do it. He'll do it exceedingly abundantly more than, better than what you ask or think. Just believe for the promise and then be looking for it. So when it, however God sends it, you can lay hold of it and make it yours. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains. In other words, impossible for him to get out. And stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in his cell. He struck him on the side and woke him up. Hey, get up, he said. And the chains fell off Peter's wrists. 
Then the angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. The angel told him. Verse 9, Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself. And they went through it. When they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. When this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. What were they praying? Oh God, get, release Peter from prison and send him to us. But they were thinking, oh, you know, have favor with the, those in authority so that they would release him and, and the word would go forth. And then, now, but so Peter went there, he knocked at the outer entrance and a servant named Rhoda came to answer the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed, she ran back without opening it and exclaimed, Peter is at the door. You're out of your mind, they told her. King James said, thou art mad. When she kept insisting that it was so, they said, it must be his angel. Do you think maybe they're expecting God to do it differently? But Peter kept on knocking. And when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Praise the Lord. This is rich, man. See, let God answer your prayer how he wants to do it. It's a lot better. And let me tell you, see, all these principles and laws, spiritual laws, like the law of perseverance, they all overlap and come together sooner or later with the number one principle, sowing and reaping. And that's what we see here. The prayer kept knocking, so the answer kept knocking. You can even mess up and let the miracle pass you by. But they said, oh no, you're mad. What'd they do? They went right back knocking. Hallelujah. Let's look at the next slide. But Peter kept on knocking. The answer was Peter to come to their door and knock on the door and say, I'm free, standing free. They let that pass them by, but they went back to knock again. And so the answer continued knocking. As they continued knocking in prayer, the answer continued knocking, saying, I'm here, receive me, rejoice, receive what God has. This demonstrates the power that God has made available to us if we keep on asking, keep on seeking, and keep on knocking. So why does God classify uh, perseverance as faith? Why is he pleased with us when we keep on knocking? Well, think about it. We keep on knocking because we're expecting an answer. If you're not expecting an answer, you don't keep on knocking. You knock, oh, I don't see it. Guess I'm not going to get it. Guess what? You're not going to get it. And so you keep knocking because you're expecting an answer. You're expecting an answer because you believed his promise. And that's what pleases God. It's in rocket science here, people. When I believe a promise from God, I expect to receive an answer because he has promised. That's his promise. And when I don't see an answer today, then I'm like, hey, I'm one day closer to the answer than I was yesterday. I'm expecting to see it right away. I'm looking not for how I determined God's going to do it, but however God wants to do it. And I'm waiting and I'm looking and I'm expecting. And so that when I see it, I lay hold of it and walk in the blessing of it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I keep speaking what I want to manifest in the natural until I see it in the natural. 
And that's how you keep knocking. Once you see it, you don't have to knock it. Once they opened the door and Peter went inside, they, they don't go back and say, oh, God, release Peter. No, you keep knocking until the door is open. Hallelujah. So suppose someone who you know loves you very much, okay? That's not even a question. And they invite you. He says, come over to my house. He loves you. You know he's going to be glad to see you. He promised you that if you'd come at a certain time, that he would be home. <clears throat> also imagine he always keeps his promises. And when you arrive at his home, you knock on the door. What do you do if he doesn't answer right away? You say, oh, I guess he's not, he's not home or he doesn't want to answer. I, well, I get back in my car and drive. No, you know that he keeps his promises. You know he wants to see you. Praise the Lord. And we'll be glad to see you. So you don't get in your car, do you? What do you do? You keep knocking. And maybe a little louder. The only reason why he didn't open is because he doesn't know I'm out here. Because I know he wants to open the door. I know he is in there because he gave his promise and I believe him. And you knock harder, louder, longer. You keep knocking until the door is open hallelujah you keep knocking because you expect his promise to be good well if we would do that to a person that that we know in the natural don't you think god keeps his promises more than anyone and so what do you do you don't walk turn around and walk away you keep knocking god you said your word said that this i believe it I lay a hold of it. I want to see it. I am knocking. I am waiting. I thank you that it's mine already. Even though I don't see it in the natural, I'm going to keep knocking because it is mine. Hallelujah. And God doesn't say, don't you do that. No, he's pleased with that. You'll get his attention. He'll stand still, turn, come here. What is it that you want from me? Hallelujah. And so you just keep knocking loud. Isn't that what blind Bartimaeus did? They told him to be quiet. He cried out even louder. And Jesus said it was his faith that made him whole. You can't lose if you don't quit. The only way to lose is quit. That's just another way of saying it. If you don't ever want to lose, don't quit. You can win every spiritual battle between now and all of eternity just by not quitting. So what the devil, only thing he's got, he was stripped of his power. And we were given the keys. Amen? And so the only thing he's got is to try to get you to quit. So if you make a decision, I'm not ever going to quit, Everything I believe God for, I'm going to keep believing. I'm going to keep speaking it. I'm going to keep, keep expecting it. I'm not ever going to quit. Then you will never lose a spiritual battle. And after a while, the enemy, he'll just leave you alone. He doesn't like to lose, but he's a loser. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The only way to lose is quit. You may think, oh, it's too late because... I've already quit. Well, what do you do? You get back up and start knocking and keep knocking until you have the victory. Praise the Lord. If you're still breathing, if your heart's still beating, then it's not too late. Hallelujah. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. Proverbs 24, 1. No matter, it doesn't matter how many times you go down. If you keep getting up, you're going to win. Because if you don't quit, you can't lose. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so, Galatians 6, 9. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So if you don't give up, you get the harvest. And it'll be at the proper time. Sometimes we don't understand, why is it taking so long? Well, that means the blessing and the answer is really going to be good. 
The longer it takes, the better it is because God's working behind the scenes. Remember the angel Michael told Daniel, he said, when you first prayed, the answer was sin. So God's working behind the scenes, working out all kind of details so that the answer is going to be tremendous. It's not, oh, I got this answer, but I still got to navigate through all this. No, he just puts it in right in play where you don't have to go and uh, butt your head against a wall. He'll just change people's hearts. He'll move things around and just place you in the right place at the right time. It's like when you put a deposit into the bank. The longer it stays there, the more it is when you make the withdrawal. So when I believe in God for something and I don't see it, but I keep knocking, I'm thinking, ooh, the increase, which is like what interest is. It's just increase. Increase is being laid on top of that. God is working behind the scenes to make it so easy for me when the answer comes that it'll just be a blessing not only to me but to people all around me. And the longer it goes, the more excited I get. I'm that much closer to the answer and the answer keeps getting better and better and better. I'm going to knock some ladder because I'm ready for it. I'm waiting for it. I'm looking for it. I'm going to lay hold of it when I see it. So we want to develop our faith for God always to deliver us speedily. In the Psalms, David always talked about, you know, to bring deliverance and speedily. That's what we expect from God. As soon as we knock, we're looking for it. And we don't see it, we keep knocking. And we expect to see it right away, yet be willing to fight that particular fight all the days of our life if necessary. Then all the while looking for victory each day. Hallelujah. That's my story. And I'm sticking to it. Praise the Lord. So, um, what I want to do, it looks like they're coming along pretty good over there. I want to pray and I want you to think about, ask God to reveal to you right now, things that you believe for that maybe you quit believing for. Too much time has gone by or it looked too impossible. You know, like Peter between two soldiers and in chains and in the inner prison and there were centuries there and all that. It was, it's, it's impossible. Or I had my chance and it passed me by and you quit knocking. It looked too hard. It looked impossible. Maybe God didn't want that that blessing for me. No, I want you to know it's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom and your inheritance right here while you're on the earth. Most of your inheritance, you're not going to need when you get to heaven. When you get to heaven, your problems are over. Most of the promises of God are for us now. So we can shine and we can show forth the love of God, the power of God, the goodness of God, the peace and the provision of God. Therefore, the now where this world is messed up and we come in with dominion over all things of the earth and the authority and of the name of Jesus and the power of all heaven, resurrection power backing us up. And we come into a situation that's a mess and we speak God life and resurrection power based on the promise of the word of God. We believe it in our heart. We confess it with our mouth. We believe it and begin to walk in it. And those circumstances begin to change because the word of God will not and will make it on earth as it is in heaven. And so don't quit. If you quit on something, you are believing and you just set it on the shelf. There is no shelf in the kingdom of God to put something that you're believing for. You keep believing. You keep expecting every single day. You're looking for it. And if you don't see it, you don't quit. You just knock a little more often and a little louder. Hallelujah. And you just keep doing it until you see it. So I want you to, uh, if there's anything that you have, just quit. Maybe, you know, God's done a lot of good things for you. You have believed God, but there's a particular thing that you just thought, well, maybe that's not for me. That's just for, you know, the super anointed people or, 
something. No, these things are for who he says, everyone who keeps knocking, it will be open. Everyone who keeps asking, it'll be received. So I want you to see yourself as just getting up off the ground and begin to go up to a door. And in the spirit realm, you're starting to knock and you're knocking for that thing and you're expecting when the door is open, you're going to see that which you are believing God for. So let's pray together right now. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We learn that greater is he than is in us than he that is in the world. We thank you, Lord, that we have patience. And in Jesus' name, Lord, we pick up that thing that we laid down and we hold it before you and say, God, I'm believing your promise. That which you have promised belongs to me as a child of God. And in Jesus' name, I'm knocking on the door and I'm expecting to see it right away, but I will never quit. I will keep knocking until it is manifest into the natural no matter how impossible it may look. And I thank you for the victory. I thank you that it's already mine in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, that there will be a time Well, I'll stand right here in front of this pulpit with a microphone in my hand and testify how God opened the door when it looked like it would never happen. Thank you, Lord that you are the God of the impossible. And we thank you for a complete victory in Jesus' name. And all the people said in agreement, amen and amen.